I am by no means an expert on Japan or Tokyo. Just got here myself, but uh, I thought it would be kind of a cool opportunity to show you guys what an average kind of normal apartment looks like in uh, Tokyo, Japan. So we're gonna go to the one that we have currently and uh, show you what it's like. These, uh, these restaurants right next to the train tracks are super cool. They're actually like built into the railroad. It's freaking awesome. Um, this is where people come like late night, even for like lunch snacks and stuff. Super vibey, super cool. Baby's about to die though, she's so hungry, so we gotta find something baby appropriate for her to eat. Basically, a lot of the uh, more affordable housing in Tokyo, you'll walk down these little alleyways. It's not gonna be on like a main road, but it's right off of a main road, so super convenient. Got all your bars and convenience stores kind of next door. Uh, and it's, it's kind of nice, but it's a little, well, you'll see. So we have arrived. No, we don't live inside of a soap and noodle shop. I actually live here. So, please keep the door closed. Gotta open it to get inside. And then in here, everyone's got their little uh, mailboxes for their houses. There's only a few apartments in here. Now here, we have to use our code, which is what? I forgot our code. Enter. This door will open and let us into the tiny, tiny little elevator. So we need to go to the fourth floor. And here she comes. Now this thing is absolutely tiny, you can see. And it's only for this apartment block. So, hit four, keep it open. I'll we'll shut it here. Really only meant for one or two people, to be honest. Four. Reset six. And we've arrived. Mm -hmm. Now here's our apartment, and we have another code here. Yes. Gives us friendly S in. Here we are. All right, it was an absolute mess, but now you guys can see the uh, the bed actually takes up the entire room. So it's basically a one bedroom apartment. It's just a one room apartment, really. And it's, you know, it's two twin beds pushed up next to each other, which kind of creates the, uh, you know, the illusion that you have a nice big king size bed. Kind of cozy, kind of nice. Well, from my bed where I use my computer, it takes up like most of the room, but from my bed I can watch TV. If I turn on my side, a fascinating show where men are sitting at a table. We have that again. We have that again. I have some sort of soap opera. And we have that, that boring program about stones. As you can see, there's if you look up here, there's a like a celebrity panel. And basically, they're on most TV shows uh, reacting to what's happening because Japanese people like to know how they should react. Um, you're kind of trained from a young age to be a TV personality here. Very strange idea. So basically, you have them approving or disapproving of what's happening. So that's how you know how to react. You have women drinking green juice. I guess we do have more than four channels. We have a hairy dinosaur, so maybe a kid's show. Wow, calm down. And we have people dressed up in ridiculous outfits. And we have Kane Safe Plus. Oh, I keep seeing this. This is like math or circuitry or something. And we're back to the uh, panel of old men. You can see there's not a whole lot of room to eat because the table has been taken by all our newly arrived luggage. But, uh, you know, the floor can make two. <laughs> I guess that's okay. You enjoying your Family Mart convenience store meal? Is it yummy? Mm -hmm. Is it good? You like it? Mm -hmm. Num num. You got your little lamps and stuff. This right here is if somebody's at the door and you can actually unlock here. So there's a speaker here. You can adjust the volume uh, and see a little video of who's at the door. Down here you have all your router and internet stuff, which is blip bleeping away down there. 
and uh, everything's kind of nicely organized and all the electronics are housed. The walls are kind of nice. This is this nice uh, paper-like texture. Very Japanese, kind of nice. Uh, these little lamps here are just your standard little lamp, which has been unplugged for some reason. Flick that, that bad boy on. Nice little light. Over here you have your closet space. This is pretty much all the storage space you're gonna get in a one bedroom apartment in Tokyo. You get your mirror here, which is weird because you won't get this in uh, the bathroom. This is outside of the bathroom, so you gotta get ready kind of in your bedroom slash your kitchen. Your coffee machine here. Your washing machine for your clothes is just right here, which is kind of bizarre. So you're cooking your soup or whatever you're cooking, your slippers at this point. You go for your glass of wine here, take a sip, cook your slippers, and then also wash your clothes, which is kind of weird. You got your sink. By the way, there's only one stove and it's electric. Um, you can't cook two things at once, which is kind of crappy if you're making like pasta and sauce. You have another little mirror here. Uh, Vivi, why don't you go stand next to the bed and give people a little perspective. Here's an average size Asian adult. You can see just how small this is. Now Vivi's only about five foot one, five foot two, mm. and she's taking up like half the room. Wow. <laughs> Why are you saying bye bye to mama? Because she wanna go out. You wanna go? We're gonna go out. Bye bye. You calling me? <laughs> Why are you showing us your belly? This is not a good apartment tour. Nudity. Uh, anyway, this is the. Um, this is actually what controls the water temperature. So this will turn the water heater on. You got your microwave here. Hair dryer for some bizarre reason is on top of it. There. You have your normal little fridge and freezer combo. Nothing in there right now. Are you impressed? Yeah. Open. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, you can play with that. Okay, inside of here. Inside of here we have the bathroom. Now the bathrooms in Japan, pretty much all of them, are covered in this uh, plastic-like material so you can actually just hose the whole thing off. There's a nice little sink. Very clean, very tidy, very small. Can't do too much here. Um, this is your shower, so you get like a place to sit down. There's no bath in this one. Uh, that's the drain down there. Just your average shower setup, really. The toilet, however, is not average. Now this, <laughs> this Toyo washlet does quite a few things. Now, if you sit on it, you'll actually hear it starting to make a noise. Now watch this. Now what it's doing right now is actually heating up my ass. I am wearing pants right now. I'm surprised that it actually works. It must be like pressure sensitive but I can feel my ass getting warmed up and it's just automatic how it does that's pretty interesting. You got your uh, flush buttons here. We also have the bidet. So basically this will spray your ass clean. If I push these buttons here, basically they'll spray your, your behind, clean you up. You can change the water pressure of the bidet. And this is pressure sensitive, so it's not gonna come out randomly. Um, and you have all kinds of controls here, which is some of them I can't read because I can't read Japanese. I can only read some of the Chinese characters. I'm going to close that. Bye bye Toyo Washlet. I've actually seen a lot more high tech versions of this in Japan. This is just a, you know, your average basic one. And a couple more little quirks. Get your view out here. Not a whole lot going on on the streets of Tokyo at the moment. A little bit rainy, but it looks like it's clearing up. Anyway, here is this little secret door. This is kind of cool. This is actually a elevator, an emergency elevator, and everyone has one of these. So if things go down, I can actually open this up, get inside here, and get out. So if there's a fire or any sort of emergency, I thought that was kind of cool. People don't have to share that. I feel like it would, you know, if you had a cup, one too many drinks and you're really lazy, you'd just go out here. But uh, yeah, the emergency ladder slash elevator, very handy, very nice. And yeah, I'd say this is probably about, 10 square meters, 15 square meters. 
And to rent something like this would be about $2,000 a month. And that is the, you know, the area that we're in in Tokyo, Ginza is quite expensive. That being said, I don't know if it's worth it. It's quite pricey. But whoever uh, bought these a long time ago are quite lucky to be sitting on such expensive properties. So anyway, that's your average apartment. It's one of those situations where you wouldn't want to spend too much time at home. You barely have room to do anything. Uh, and that's why maybe Japanese people are so thin. That's probably why they're so thin, isn't it? They're just out walking around all the time. Yeah. Seriously, that, why would you ever want to be in here? I have bicycles as well. What does that have to do with what I just said? Nothing. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, little preface for all the newcomers on the channel. I do not live in Japan. We are visiting Japan, making some comparison videos to China. Uh, but yeah, the apartments here are much smaller than China. That's for very, that's for sure, isn't it? Why are you playing in the fridge? Because you never play with the fridge. Well, that's a good, good reason. Anyway, thank you so much, Lot Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.